But uh, next, we, <laughs> next is Daniel. Uh, Dan, Daniel in Indiana. Thanks for waiting. You're on with Matt and Don. Hey guys, how you doing? Pretty well. All right. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, I, I think I'm the only atheist in Indiana, if not the world. Uh, and so my thesis is wait, 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 really, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Sorry. You, you're the only atheist in Indiana no, no, and, no. and the world. The, the, the only deist. Oh. D e i s t. I, I yes. think I think deists are more maybe more common than you realize. But go ahead. Well, yeah, because be confusion great. is rampant. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, my uh, my question for you guys is really about. It's not about the arguments themselves. It's kind of meta. It's it's about uh, what drives uh, most atheists to be atheists is not in fact any of the arguments. It's in fact a hatred of all of the religions. Oh, that's and uh, how, I, how, I how do you, how do you demonstrate that when I'm going to sit here and tell you? that my reason for not believing is because the claims haven't met their burden of proof. I, I do believe that that is true for a small percentage, sure. but I don't believe that that is representative of the vast majority. Well, and I, I, mean, I call myself, myself an anti-theist, and, and I'm primarily motivated by the harm that religions do, but, but yeah. that's, not, yeah. that's, not my, but that's not my reason for being an atheist. That uh, so gives I'm me some passion, passion about, no, for being an atheist. So there's something more yeah. important here, there's something more important here, and that all of that is utterly irrelevant to whether or not there is a God. The fact that people might believe things for bad reasons or not believe them for bad reasons is irrelevant as to whether or not there's good reason to believe that a God exists. Okay, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I have no argument with that at all. Okay. However, the problem is that we have the vast majority of atheists who, just like Christians... I don't, I don't accept your assertion, <laughs> and it's not relevant. Oh, okay, so here's the relevance. They are concluding something and then retroactively justifying it, which means they're, they're not... How do, you, how do you demonstrate that this is what most people have done? I, I read minds on well, stage. I pretend to read minds on stage. <laughs> I'm not aware yeah. of anybody who can actually read minds, and yet that's what you're doing. And it's still you're irrelevant. Right. I, 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 well, okay, it's, here's what's relevant. The highest cause is for us to look for the truth. Oh, right? uh, okay, hang on. I'm fine with having that. I don't know where you got this idea that it's the highest cause, but I certainly care about finding truth. Yeah, you do. I've, I've, I've listened to all of your, or several of your things, and, and we're on the same page. So We're in the same book, maybe, but I'm not sure we're on the same page yet. Okay, so here's my, here's my, the, here's my question. Do you think that there is a slippery slope problem? For example, if you tomorrow... Uh, concluded deism, would you have a bunch of Christians jumping on you saying, hey, you're halfway there? Uh, I, I guess that there would be people that, are, that would say that, in particular because I've heard Muslim imams talk about um, They sort of did that with Anthony sense. Flew, right? But, yeah, we, we saw this with Anthony Flew and others, so I don't know what, what does that have to do with whether or not there's a God and what a reasonable position is. Okay, because if deism, let's say, for example, is true, you have a bunch of people who, because of their hatred of all religion, are simply running to atheism because it suits them. I, I'm, actually... I'm, I'm done living in your fantasy land, Daniel. Why do you keep asserting? Can we not just talk about what it is that is reasonable to believe instead of you trying to tarnish without actual facts? A multitude of people on what their goal is. Oh, I'm so I'm so scared of Christianity that I'm going to run to atheism. And I'm, let's just talk about what is. Okay, so it's impossible to dig into these people's brains. But has that not been your general experience? No. That, like for example, no. on your show. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and I'm still asking you. So why is it that you're so desperate to go down this route after I've repeatedly asked? Not to, and let's talk about what is. What, 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 can you just like get to the point of what it is that you're trying to say so that I can rip that apart as well? <laughs> okay. It's that if deism were true, you have a profound motivation, just like with Christians, to go in their direction. You have people who are driven to embrace a conclusion that they're not actually honestly considering. 
Okay, Daniel, 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 you're still talking about people and their motivations, and I'm talking right. about what position is reasonable to believe. You got one last shot at this. Because okay. deism, first of all, <laughs> deism, first of all, is a useless, unfalsifiable proposition that, in its current state, cannot have sufficient evidentiary, evidentiary support to warrant belief. Okay, so, I mean, that's, that's the 24-hour conversation, and I, I agree that all of that is worth having. I thought, I, thought I finished it in, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you gave, you gave your assertion and your conclusion, but De we didn't... No, 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 no. okay, okay, here, let me, let me do another 20 seconds. The deistic God is a non-interventionist God, which means, by definition, it is undetectable. Okay. Which means that there can't be evidence. Either there's a God or there's not. And if there is a God, either it's detectable or it's not. And an undetectable so God, now, an undetectable okay. God is logically indistinguishable from the God that doesn't exist, right? No, logical positivism got blown away 50 years ago. No, no, no. From our point of view, a God that doesn't exist and a God that hides itself so that we cannot investigate its existence are the same. No, that's not true. There are well, you're just things. you're just functionally wrong. From our point of view, something that doesn't exist and something that exists but is indistinguishable from that which does not exist is, by definition, indistinguishable from that which does not exist. This is this is the reason that arguments like the cosmological or the fine tuning have to be delved into. Isn't that right? Or do you simply categorically throw those away? I, I have, they, I have, have, I have rebuttals to those, but actually the Kalam cosmological argument doesn't get you to deism. It doesn't get you to theism, it doesn't get you to deism, it doesn't get you to Christianity. What it gets you to, the conclusion of the Kalam cosmological argument is that therefore the universe has a cause for its existence. That it, it doesn't tell you what that cause is, whether it's a god, whether it's an agent. So no, I don't have to delve into the Kalam at all when having discussions about religion. Or you don't deism. think that the conclusion of the Kalam is that a transcendent no. being was... No, okay. no. I'm not only do I not think that you can prove it to yourself. Go Google Kalam cosmological argument and tell me what the conclusion is. <laughs> are you, okay. are, hey, uh, Daniel? Therefore, the universe Daniel, has a cause. Daniel, Disney are you answer. familiar? <laughs> are you familiar with the Kalam cosmological argument? Yeah, it's just what, what is what is, the, what is the what is the first Daniel? What is the wow. what is the first? <laughs> what's the last line of it, okay. Daniel? What is the first Here premise, me. Daniel? What's the first premise? Uh, wow. Okay. Well, you lost some points there, guys. I'm going to have to let you go. Oh, so you're oh. running away. <laughs> you tell me you're familiar with something and how awesome and that I'm is. wrong. <laughs> and when I try to get you to tell to, to say so that we can demonstrate, you don't want to do it? <laughs> oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, for everybody else, here's the Cosmo Kalam <laughs> cosmological argument off the top of my freaking head. Premise number one. Everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. Now, this is a new premise from the old versions of the cosmological argument that just said that everything has a cause for its existence. And then somebody pointed out, hey, isn't God part of the set everything? And then he would have a cause. Oh, yeah, we can't have that. Oops. So now we're going to invent <laughs> things that don't have a cause when we have no demonstration of anything having a cause. But anyway, premise one, everything that, has a, everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. Premise number two, the universe began to exist. Conclusion, therefore, the universe has a cause for its existence. That's the whole damn argument. There's nothing in there about gods. There's nothing in there about agents. Transcendence and or woo-woo or and any I'm, of that crap. And I'm sorry that Daniel doesn't know that, but maybe that's why Daniel's arguing on behalf of deism by pretending that people just want to uh, rebel against Christianity so they follow a slippery slope to deism. Well, maybe that's what you did, Daniel, but the rest of us, some of us, actually studied and realized where the burden of proof rests and wh who hasn't made their burden of proof. And... I didn't set out to be against Christianity or Islam or Scientology or anything else. Instead, I began to understand what the null hypothesis is, where the burden of proof rests, and that religious claims have not met theirs. And what's worse is that deism cannot meet theirs. Deism is a cowardly acceptance of a, an utterly unfalsifiable proposition that if, I, if we're going to play the game of let's pretend like we can read people's minds, I suspect that most deists are atheists who are just afraid to say so? They don't want that extra baggage? I mean, how, right. how much of a douche would I have to be to regularly say that? And that's everything that Daniel did during his call. Yep. And cool kids who are black. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me you know an argument if you don't want to talk about it. Don't tell me that an argument is essential to your position and then run away the second I ask you about the argument. Oh, you, you guys didn't make yourself look very good today. I beg to differ, sir.